Okay, so self-esteem develops in, when a child, as I said, is in a nurturing environment. They have encouragement, love, affirmation, care. And so because that is the environment, they will think they're special, they'll think they're important, they will think that they can make a contribution with the gifts and talents given them. So as a result, they engage in healthy risk-taking in life. And under the encouragement and instruction of that great school teacher, which you all are, they will, for example, when challenged with mathematics, will roll up their sleeves and take to it with great vigour and enthusiasm. And that leads to education and learning, which leads to achievement, which leads to success. But let me ask you, how is your self-esteem? Rhetorical questions. How is your level of self-confidence? Are you one that readily engages in risk-taking? Imagine for a minute a hypothetical situation. You've been invited to the opera. It's a $450 ticket. You're going to react in one of two ways, aren't you? The opera, you've got something to say, just say it. You don't need to sing it to me. I'm not going to pay $450 to do that, to go and see that. But you won't do that because you are teachers and you love to see people celebrating their gifts and using their gifts, don't you? And it's a remarkable skill set at the opera, isn't it? And your friend tells you, make sure you wear something flash. So you are in a beautiful dress. You get there, 40 minutes of the opera, you're looking around and there are a whole lot of people dressed very flashly. And there are high people, high people up in society there as well. And you're surprised that you're there because you're a teacher. A, you don't get a lot of money. B, you work most nights, haven't got a lot of free time. And C, you're not up high in the social strata of society, are you? Who would invite a teacher? But then there's intermission. And there is incredible hors d'oeuvres laid on for you. And I say, champagne in cocktail glasses. What? <laughs> and at 300, I beg your pardon, at $450 a ticket, they'd want to be, wouldn't they? You want to be eating lobsters to you? You're completely full. And then your friend introduces you to three remarkable people. One of them is a retired SAS officer who now goes into cities in Southeast Asia kidnapping kids out of brothels that are forced into prostitution. There is a person who actually does this in Australia. And your jaw has dropped. And you're going, wow. Wow. You can't stop saying wow. The next person you meet is a world-leading neurologist. She's just discovered that there's a protein that goes rogue in the brain, destroying the myelin sheath of nerve cells, leading to Alzheimer's and dementia. And you're going, wow. And she thinks she can make a vaccination. And you say, wow, again. Wow. And the next person, the third person, is Anna Mears. Australia's greatest ever track cycling champion. And you're beside yourself, wow. And then they look at you, all three of them, and you've been asking them lots of questions, that's how you know all this information. And they say, and what do you do? How do you react? Do you feel like that kangaroo late at night caught in the high beam headlights on the highway and you're going, <laughs> is that how you would feel? You're thinking, oh look, they're probably gonna realise that I'm going to say I've got to do up shoelaces when boys have just come from the toity and they're all wet and, that, and they're probably going to say, oh, would you like some more champagne? I've got to go to the toilet and suddenly all three are gone. Well, here's what you should say and how you should say it. I'm so incredibly glad that you asked me. You see, I'm a child advocate with my primary focus aimed at building self-esteem and self-confidence to healthy levels in an authoritative framework whereby the people that I'm building for Australia's future come to understand and passionately embrace the life-affirming values of love, grace, mercy, courage, compassion, determination, faithfulness, fairness, friendship, forgiveness, integrity, honour, humility, justice, kindness and respect. And are shown very carefully how to give a Big emphatic no to drug use, alcohol abuse, promiscuous behaviour and any form of disrespect to other people whatsoever. And when I'm not doing that, I teach them to dream dreams and show them very carefully how to go into the world and achieve those dreams. And I sometimes have the time to teach them how to read and write and understand and solve complicated mathematical problems and understand complicated scientific phenomena such as gravity, a force whereby two mutual bodies in space are attracted to each other and the magnitude of the attraction is inversely proportional to the square root of the distance between the two bodies. Do you understand what I'm saying, you three? Well, put simply, whatever goes up must come back down again. That's what gravity is. I'm also a child psychologist, a child counsellor, a sociologist, a philosopher, an astronomer, astrophysicist, biologist, chemist, environmentalist, geographer, historian, mathematician and physicist. And I'm also an OHS guru, a life skills coach, a sports coach, a careers advisor, an educational ambassador 
and an advocate. And I'm absolutely convinced, beyond any shadow of a doubt, if I get my job right, those children in my care will be nurtured, esteemed, honoured, protected, and will go into the world and become outstanding people, just like you three. That's what you should say, and that's how you just should say it. What you do is amazing. I've only just touched on the surface of all the roles that you have as a school teacher. Am I right? Yes, I am, aren't I? I am. And by the way, those three people now, their jaws would have dropped, and they'll be saying, wow. And then they'll say, wow, backwards. Wow. 